All right, Mr. Armstrong, go ahead and connect, uh, connect the dots for me. What is that song and who's it by and why are we listening to it? So the song was by Queen. Title was I Want It All. And we are listening to it because it is the perfect song, in my opinion, that describes the um, mentality of the rulers, right, or the absolute rulers, absolute monarchs, right after the uh, Enlightenment philosophs. So the song is titled, We Want It All. What is their attitude? What does that actually mean for their response to Enlightenment ideas? Well, they want to try to make the people happy by giving in to some of these ideas of the Enlightenment, yet they want to keep absolute power and absolute control over their entire state. That sounds a little confusing. It sounds like that might be like an oxymoron. How can you keep absolute power but give in to or granting individual rights if you're a ruler. That, that, that relationship just can't exist. Right. So I guess that's really what the students are going to kind of be searching for and trying to discover as they go through this, this topic, right? Because that ties into the, the, the essential question of how do the Enlightenment ideas affect the absolute monarchs? So that's it's a great question, and I think we should probably leave them... Um, leave it kind of dangling there for them to figure out as they as they go through. All right, so we'll see if they actually, the monarchs, get what they want, being all of it. All right, our next slide here is just a little refresher on enlightenment ideas um, and kind of like what the people are starting to demand from their government, and now the monarchs have to respond, right, which is what this unit's all about. So our very first one is keep calm and know your natural rights. We're talking about... Uh, Mr. John Locke, your right uh, to, for life, liberty, and property. What's the next one here? Um, the next one is the is freedom of speech, um, which is with Voltaire. Um, and then I'll actually just go right underneath that one too, because it deals with Voltaire as well, which is this idea of freedom of religion. Um, and this is where we would say that the idea of separation of church and state is yeah, absolutely. emphasized, right? Yeah, and if you look at like... Freedom of religion also means freedom from religion, meaning that your government is not forcing a certain religion on you. Therefore, uh, the state or the government and religion is being completely separate. And the separation of church and state comes from this era and obviously is a big thing with the United States government. All right, so then we'll jump back up to the, the top right um, with the, the guy holding on to the prison bars here, which that's got to be a symbol for who? Uh, it's Beccaria, 100%. Criminal rights. So um, that leaves us with one with one picture left. Um, and there are there are two parts to this image. One is the three branches of government, so the separation of power. Um, and then the other one is the check and balance, um, preventing one, one branch or one part from having too much power. And Montesquieu argued that without these two things, people's liberty would be would be at jeopardy, would be jeopardized, right? Correct, yeah. His natural law was that in order to protect natural rights, you had to have a separation of branches and a check and balance in your government. Awesome, all right. So um, now that we've kind of reviewed a little bit of the Enlightenment philosophical ideas, um, we'll, we will um, let that drive us into this idea of the Enlightened Despots and, and go from there. So. Um, so the Enlightenment, the area of questioning government, the Enlightened despots are that period in between. I guess somewhere around 1740 to 1790. Uh, this unit is going to be a very small one, but for about 50 years, we're going to see how the absolute rulers respond to these demands of the Enlightenment. And still trying to, again, keep it, keep it all for, for themselves and all the power. So let's look at a couple of these um, individuals. The first one we'll look at is... Um, Frederick II of, of Prussia. Um, and Mr. Williams, the quote here says, I have come to an agreement with my people that they will say what they want and I will do what I wish. Yeah, I, I think that that's a good snapshot of enlightened despotism where you have Frederick II granting limited freedom of speech while also keeping a hold of his absolute power. Um, what's limited freedom of speech even look like, Mr. Armstrong? Well, so he's basically saying that people can say what they want, but it doesn't really mean that I will listen to it or that I'll 
take it into consideration or that I'll do anything for them, right? It's like, you can say what you want, but since it's limited, if I don't agree with you, I bet there's still going to be a price to be paid. Yeah, it seems like Frederick II um, is definitely wanting it all here. And if you look at the picture on the, on the right, um, this is going to kind of give you a hint of something that Frederick II is, is known for. Um, but we'll go ahead and save that for some of the reading that you'll have to do after this video. All right, so the next person we've got is Joseph II of Austria. And um, I'm really proud of myself for uh, coming up with this idea, with this image of um, going, going all in, right? So he takes a lot of the ideas from the Enlightenment um, philosophs, such as freedom of speech, freedom of religion, um, criminal rights, I think he gets rid of torture, and yeah, basically you've, you've said it very well. Uh, Joseph II is all in, and he wants to give all Enlightenment ideas to the people. Um, but there are probably three main uh, either institutions or, uh, or groups of people, right? Or groups of people. You've got you, the church, you've got the serfs. So, yeah, the masses. Um, and then you've got the nobility. Um, and we'll let you guys figure out how that story goes, but I think he actually finds a way to upset all three, even though he is delivering what people want uh, with enlightenment ideas, which is pretty, it was just pretty impressive to upset three completely different groups of people all at the same time. Yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Last one is uh, Catherine the Great of Russia. Catherine um, the Great, the scaredy cat. Yeah, I think so. Just like we mentioned, the nobility they are all powerful in Russia uh, when she claims uh, the throne. Uh, her predecessor was actually killed by the nobility. So the predecessor meaning the person who came before her. Yeah, correct. Yep, it's pretty much the definition. So she likes to talk about Enlightenment ideas, but I don't think she's daring enough or brave enough. Now we're looking at... Oh, or, or dumb enough, right? Because yeah. what's going to happen if she does go with the Enlightenment ideas? She already saw what happened to the person before her. Right, and that's... I would probably do what Catherine did, and that's not grant Enlightenment ideas, but you'll find that she is one that just simply likes to talk about it. All right, and then um, the last thing here is just to kind of give you, we've talked about some different places that maybe you've never seen of or heard of before. So just to kind of give you an idea as to where those are located, probably specifically with um, Prussia, right? Yeah, Prussia confuses a lot of students and key in on, if you can circle that, Mr. Armstrong, I can. Berlin. Um, the Berlin, or Berlin is the capital of Germany and it's also the capital of Prussia. So when we mention Prussia, we're not talking about Russia. Prussia is not Russia. Prussia is Germany. And uh, so you can actually see with the big X there, Russia is where Catherine the Great was. Prussia is where Frederick II was. And then the Austrian Empire is where Joseph II was ruling. Um, and that was a, a pretty large uh, empire back then. He's the one who went all in. So these are kind of like the three areas that we're, we're concentrating on, basically Eastern Europe in 1760. All right, so this is where we're going to end um, this chat. You guys are going to um, do some work looking at those three individuals and seeing what Enlightenment ideas they were either speaking of and trying and you know proponents of, either even even if it's just verbally, um, and or what items they were actually able to implement. So we gave you a couple examples, but you'll find some more um, as you as you search through um, the material, textbook, or what other resources. That are out there. Yep, there'll be a PDF of the reading on Schoology and the chart used to fill it out will be on Schoology as well. We'll give you a hard copy in class. Besides that, it's been fun. Happy hunting.